the first question I actually want to ask everybody. What do you think is probably the most dangerous place to send your child? Prison. That's what I could think of. Yes. What if I told you that it's actually where we send them every single day? School. Uh, someone actually thought of it. I thought, no, I don't want to come up with that. Um, but yes, it's true. We actually tend to underestimate the role of school that it has in our lives from the time that we enter in preschool. And I'm not talking about the roles that it prepares us, the obvious one, such as at some point getting a qualification of some sort and then getting employed, then getting a house, paying your bills, or that thing that we all hate so passionately called paying our taxes. No, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is something more crucial than that, that we're all aware of, but we seem to not pay enough attention to it. And that's about becoming socially and emotionally aware members of society. So what is it that we mostly focus on when it comes to schools as parents or even as an outsider looking in? We tend to focus on actual the formal curriculum. So basically that is what you go to school to study, whether it be maths, reading, writing, and they're all important skills. You need to know how to write your name, you need to know how to read important documents. You need to know how to be able to count, to count change that you get until it's part of everyday life. It's an important thing. However, what we all tend to not realize that there's a, another side of that coin that are not all of us looking at. And so everything I've just said, you probably already know and probably wondering, okay, what do you got to tell me? On the flip side of that coin is something called the hidden curriculum. So the definition of hidden curriculum is a set of norms, values, uh, beliefs, uh, that it's a manifestation of structures and, of, and functioning of an institution. So basically, in, in simple language, what that means, that's everything that's not intended but you learn at school, behaviors, like I said, with values, norms, and everything. So it's not part of the formal curriculum. There's not like a class that you go to to learn that. but. We just learn it. So for example, at a very early stage in our lives, we realize how important our grades are and that it's very important from the time we go to high school and whether you go to college to get a degree or whatever it may be, you realize there's huge weight that's put on, on getting those good grades. No one taught it. It's just it's something that we absorb and internalize through natural observations from the time we enter school. And another example, we learned that very early that it's actually more important to give the right answer rather than to formulate our own opinions and things as such as that. We need to give the right answer. So those are basic examples. And there's a vast amount of different examples, but that's just a basic outline of what I mean by hidden curriculum. However, amongst this, whether it be morals, beliefs, the one common one that tends to be a thread through all schools, regardless of where they're placed, is gender and gender roles. And that's one thing we definitely all learn from the time we enter school in your first grade, that we get separated from boys and girls. It's something that we learn from get-go. There's books for boys and there's books for girls. We learn that boys are strong and we learn that girls are submissive and passive and, and weak, as some people would like to say. We learn that we learn that we are not equal and it's something that it's not in the formal curriculum, but we just learn it. And it goes on, especially into boys, where we learn boys don't cry, suck it up, be a man. And we might not think, we might think, oh, so what, what impact does it really have on us, whether it be in that, where boys be boys, be a man, and we don't understand what it means. Until, up until last year, one of my close friends, they went through a difficult time and they attempted to commit suicide. And after that entire ordeal, he once told me, he said, actually, Johnson, I don't know why I thought of it right now, but for some reason, I was planning to use a gun. And I don't know why, because I hate guns. I don't know why what that was the choice of of a means that I'm going to commit suicide. And that's when I decided to do a little bit of research. And I didn't find much research, but what I did find is that around the globe, in a lot of places, women have a close ideation with suicide. So that means that more women at some point in their lives are going to probably 
feel suicidal and attempt suicide. However, the interesting thing is men have a higher mortality rate. So even besides the fact that there's more women who will probably be suicidal, more men will actually commit suicide and the mortality rate's higher. And one of, the, one of the papers that I actually read, which was interesting, it picked out that in the studies that they did, men chose to use much more violent means of doing that, whereas women use things such as maybe poisoning yourself, where men would use guns, shotguns, uh, much more violent, violent ways. So and the reason why I'm telling you that is just in case if you were probably heard when I was saying boys be boys and thought there's not much to it, and it got me thinking that all these manifestations of misogyny, patriarchy, or whatever it may be, doesn't just pop up when we're in our early 20s, you know, and it doesn't just rock up, it actually starts at some point. And what if it, what I'm trying to say is, what if it's starting at the time we actually enter school, all these things that we learn and are, that are small and that are basically like a drop in a bucket that we don't pay attention to, no one, if your roof is leaking and each drop and you say, I'm going to do it later, we don't really pay too much attention to it until at some point when that bucket is full and all of a sudden water is falling onto your floor and it's damaging your nose and that's when you want to take it seriously. And that is pretty much the same thing that happens to us as we grow up. We don't take it seriously until late in our lives we're dealing with domestic violence or we're dealing with anger issues from young men all the way to elderly men. And it doesn't just, it doesn't just happen. We, 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 we don't pay attention to it that happens at the beginning. And it got me thinking, being involved in so many organi organizations and activities, why is it that it's getting worse? And it got me thinking, maybe we've been doing this the, the wrong way. We're trying to make people unlearn uh, behavior rather than actually going to the source of the problem, which is at the beginning. And that's where it started. So, when we're talking about how boys uh, learn this, we realize that he said to me, I wanted to talk to someone, but I couldn't. And it got me to realize that he had no emotional literacy. He did not have the tools to, to do that because why? We've, viol we've violenced masculinity. You know, you, you, can't be, you can't be emotional. It's too feminine, and that's what we get taught from, from school, social groups, even at home, or wherever it may be, it always seems to, you can't do that, so he didn't know what to do, and this is what happens through a lot of young men, where even if they want to talk about their problems, they don't know, because it's either I have to lose a part of what it means being a, a man, or I can just rather suffer, and most of the time we're going to go and draw the stuff up because I can't be ostracized from my group of being too feminine or, or, or being girly or whatever the things that we like to coin it. So I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you all of this stuff to say it's an ex that is our reason and it's an excuse it's to let us off the hook. Uh, all the problems that whatever it be, misogyny, violence. What I'm trying to actually to get out there is that maybe we should take a look at our curriculum and not always pay attention to, to what we're actually doing. Yes, I understand maths, science, those are all important, but what good does it do if it poses so much danger to everyone and mostly ourselves that most of us actually don't know? And I'm not saying that fixing the former curriculum is just going to save everybody and change. It's gonna take a lot of work, but however, it will give us a fair fight and trying to unlearn and we can save the next generation rather than waiting 20 years for them to try and make it un unlearn all their behaviors that they've done. So I ask again, what is the most dangerous place to send a child? Thank you. <laughs>